All right, boys and girls. So we get our engine for our 1966 Project Patty. The little red Volkswagen Beetle. This is an AB code <coughs> engine case. It has been machined by Matt's Performance VW in, um, in Texas. I don't remember what town he's in. Anyway, it's a pretty good case. We're at 40 over standard thrust. This case has been clearance for Stroker. And so is the connecting rods. See where those have been machined down so they fit. Oh, the zoom. Is that, is that the best we can do? There we go. Machine down as opposed to your standard style. That would be all bulky right there. You'd have your, your bolt head. I mean, everything gets shaved down. Um, let's see. Connecting rods. Flywheel. For flywheel, we just have a stock Volkswagen flywheel that's been modified for eight dowels. That one's been resurfaced and balanced along with our crankshaft that is a cb performance crankshaft this is an old gex built engine and uh they just don't have a good reputation there was a bunch of stuff wrong with this engine when uh it came on their little blue buggy and there's just a bunch of stuff wrong with it so we're rebuilding it and replacing everything that wasn't up to snuff So anyway, we're going to have a 1904 cc engine. Right here we have a W110 camshaft, matching lifters. Have a should be stock uh, spec specification oil pump for these generation of engines. It's 26 millimeter gears. Have some CB one to one ratio rocker shaft and arm assemblies going to be using chromoly push rods a little camshaft plug of course all of our bearings have an l-ring gasket set we go l-ring because that's original right anyway we're going to get started piecing this thing back together you are where the case is split. Uh, like I say, this one's already been machined. So I know that everything fits well. But one rule of thumb is your bearing should be hard to push in. It should pop out like that. Both case halves. Should not be easy to pull in and out. I'm just going around the thrust bearing. For this side too. Maybe I won't. There you go. Say so that should be hard to push in, give you resistance in and out. <clears throat> we'll look around your engine for any cracks on the inside. Those are like a mix of, uh, I think it's magnesium and aluminum. Got pores to prone to cracking, heat expansion. This is an AS41. I can't really tell if y'all can get. It's an AS41. Some kind of a mixture of metal. The way you want to test fit all your bearings, get all your bearings in on the camshaft on this one. I've already set my thrust, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is still oily. Make sure you got oil on all your bearing surfaces. See the way his camshaft fits in. It's 
got a little bit of movement this way. Very important. What you do there. out for y'all there you go one let's do there is on your camshaft thrust bearing you have that flat lip on the outside have to there have some uh, sandpaper you put oil pretty much of any type I think I put like some two cycle mix oil on there uh, you can use thin motor oil penetrating oil whatever you want to use but you take your flat surface put your sandpaper on it lubricate your oil excuse me lubricate your sandpaper then you'll scrub your bearing on it in a circular motion That'll wear down that surface right there as evenly as possible. Um, trying to find nice flat working surface is kind of hard. A piece of glass works well. If you want to do that, if you have other things that you work on, maybe some uh, small engines, if you do cylinder heads and whatnot, you need to kind of flatten the bottom of the head out and you get you a piece of glass and use that for your sandpaper surface <clears throat> works really well you just go to your wherever your local glass shop would be and tell them you know you need you about a one foot by one foot by get you a pretty good thickness piece of glass and it's a good true flat working surface I don't have one I have my ways but that's the best thing to do now another thing to note is you have a split main bearing here can't see it in that one here there's no way to put it on the crankshaft so they made a split bearing opposed to a full circle goes in the case half on each side you can measure that one on the plastic gauge if you want to or actually i recommend that you do to make sure because um Man, I hope that your machinist does it right, but you want to check and make sure that when everything is clamped down, it's at proper clearance. Um, other than that, pull the thrust bearing and the front bearing out, set them to the side, put a camshaft back in the case. Like I said, I've already made sure that we have clearance in our thrust. I have a double thrust. I'm doing both sides. Um, I don't have any feeler gauges that thin. You can use a dial indicator to make sure that one side's the same as the other. Or you can hold them together and do the circular motion on the sandpaper. But a lot of times if you don't modify your case for that and you just have a standard set of camshaft bearings you only have one thrust surface now I like to put my camshaft in there with the bearings after I have everything clearance the way I want it in the thrust I'm going to cinch it down real quick Uh, like 25 foot pounds of torque. I'm gonna go about 22 on it. The point is, you wanna you wanna torque your engine case with your camshaft in it separately. Make sure everything spins freely. Quick and easy. There ain't nothing to it. But to do it right. Let's go in. One hand 
tight and dog your hardware, <clears throat> you'll be tightened just like your whole engine is together in this step. that one there's that one there's that one and yes I use the old style torque wrench I trust issues I don't trust them clickers never have one do me wrong I just always second guess it end up checking it with this one or one like this so just skip that step and go ahead and use this and be happy with it there's that one so I didn't put my gear on my camshaft get up here we all okay you can see down in there you got a flat surface in your camshaft head and that's where the old pump drive goes I have just a scraper it's very thick one I'm gonna stick in there as well so I'm happy with that it's torqued down our bearings are in there camshaft in their bearings everything's lubed up make sure everything's clean you don't want to scratch any of your bearings or your uh, surfaces on your camshaft or your crankshaft or anything else now we verify that that spins freely we can take it back apart I'm going to regular wrench it. Not a big fan of using impacts. I'm trying to get uh, what I'm doing, at least y'all can see something. Not a big fan of using impacts on stuff like this. Nothing wrong with it if you do. Just nice. make sure you're, you're light on your trigger. You don't want uh, over torquing or pulling any studs out. And sometimes when you get to loosen things, uh, the actual force and vibration impact can make the stud come out. Realistically, if you take it apart one time by hand and everything's good, you can probably get away with the impact. I just, I just don't bother. In case I hadn't set it yet, I want everything clean. Inside now, I want your hands clean. You don't want any dust particles in the air. If you need to build this inside your house, do it. You want it clean. One speck of dust can ruin a whole engine, depending on where it's at. Back apart. So make sure this one's spread. I don't recommend splitting your cases with your engine standing up like this. If you don't want to, I just need it to get started. There you go. Do it that way. Your camshaft still laying in your saddles, prevents anything from getting scratched. Any point in your engine build, you want to do it that way, please. Camshaft's up. I'm gonna leave my camshaft bearings in there. You don't have to. Next, we're gonna do all this same thing with the in. Uh, excuse me, with the crankshaft. We get all our bearings out, put them on the crankshaft. Get crankshaft in here, make sure it spins. Back again. I sent my bearing that goes on the crankshaft here to the machinist to put on the crankshaft before we put all these gears on, and it's not there. So, it's a bit of a problem. 
Nothing to really do about it, but get you another set of bearings. Got one of those snap rings that you have to spread. They make pliers for that, they're very handy. to make it easier, but they're handy to have. Saved y'all a little bit of the struggle there. Let's get these little doodads off. have one of these little gear pullers for this gear. I'm sure there's a way you can get it off without this, but uh sure does make life easier. Look how easy that is. Yeah. There you go. Spacer than gear.
ne yapıyor? In case you don't know, it's your uh, that drives your camshaft. Spacer between the two gears. Distributor drive. And uh, snap ring or circlip. All right. So you have a bearing that is a full circle bearing, but it goes on your, cam your crankshaft right there. We'll get everything cleaned up. All right, here we go. Grab our second set of bearings. So good. Don't really bother you. So you're here for now. Get the split guys out of there. My whole job keep going from getting dirty. It's our bearing that goes there. And we have another thrust bearing. Back in the box, make sure. Oh boy. Yes. Make sure these are the same bearings. Fit. Clean oil. We're not getting all busy with our assembly lube and all that yet. It's a bunch of just pre fitting. Clean fingers. As clean as possible. Your dowels on a certain location in the bearing. Make sure it's going to go in there the right way. That dowel needs to go towards the back of the crankshaft. That's a good precise fit. I like it. Same thing with the little front bearing. Lube it up. Where's our dowel? Yeah, yeah. The smallest portion of metal always goes towards the back of the crankshaft. Yeah, a few spins, put a little bit more roll on that one. I don't like how it felt. Oh, that's not good. It's oily enough. Small portion towards the back of the crankshaft. Gland nut end will be the back. Now, get you a way to pick it up. And you need to do all this on the, uh, this portion of it back here. Real nice and oily. Smallest portion of metal towards the back of the Crankshaft. A little pattern going in there in case you didn't pick it up. Alright. These things do start getting heavy. Be careful with them. This one's counterweighted. Got these nice little convenient wings hold on to. Okay. 
pick your bearings, get all your little dowels lined up for where they're going to case. We're going to mark them here in a second to make that so much easier when you're going back from main assembly. See to get. Yeah, it's being difficult. It's okay. Like a fight. Hard to get, huh? Certainly recommend doing that, but I'm doing it. Woo, she's tough. All right, it's been nice and free. Push on my thumb right there. Keep it towards the back. So I'm kind of wait till I want to hit these. I want to hit right there. It's making it sound like something's wrong. And it's nice and free. We like it. We like it. Put your other case F on. Again, make sure it's clean. You hold it up like this. You don't want no nasty goo goo stuff fall off of it these bearings are just pressed out they get a round face and a flat face flat face two case these are aftermarket bearings I mean excuse me aftermarket washers the washers All right, so you'll probably guessed it. I'm gonna put all this on, torque it down, and see how it spins. Ta-da! Real exciting, I know. What you would call that. Hope it was free anyway. Going on with it. Alright, time to torque. 
Don't know what I do with my crankshaft bolt. I literally just had it. We'll use the glam nut. Yeah. I wonder if y'all can see any of that. No, not really. Crankshaft's in. Pure beauty. Well, I like it anyway. I don't know much. Not much to see, huh? Very next step, we are going to put our camshaft in there with the crankshaft. You know, it's scratch that. I'm going to sit in place. I'm going to put a flywheel on this thing. And then we're going to do the camshaft. Be back. Alright. We'll set our in play. We'll get our shims ready to do that. Put a flywheel on our crankshaft. Side of the Texas stud, or it's threaded. That thread is up in there, right? It's actually feeling very well. Well, it's pretty handy. I've always put a nut and bolt on or a nut and washer on it. I didn't realize it was threaded the same. 
learn something together. Keep it tight. All right. You see the flywheel, not really. All right, we've got flywheel here. Measure the gap between the flywheel and the thrust bearing. Feeler gauges. I'm just using a full water engine. Back, we gotta do uh, the thinking and the math and stuff. That's about twelve thousandths. It's a factory one. Five thousandths. All these together. You're supposed to do it with three shims. Thirty-two. No, Thirty-two thousandths. We came up forty three, thirty nine. They give us four thousand same play. I think I have some more shims. Let me look around some more. Alright, so we had start with I come up with 43 thousandths. Got a shim stack. That shows us 039, 040. So that should be be right on the money.
take it back apart and stick these on here. Tight fit. Let's see what we can do. about how much that is moving. Get it when we rotate it a little bit. Probably can't tell, but it's coming. That's way better than the loose fit, though. That's what I'm talking about. All right. She's off. Let's 
supposed to be red on the money. Again, this isn't final assembly. We are pretty much just playing. This part of these engines is pretty aggravating, but I mean, it's just part of doing it. Take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. Shims are in. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, we're back torqued down. It's like everything is together. I'm gonna put this flywheel back on. Okay, so it's going to take off. Started laying up with your washer. Flywheel lock. Put it back into that stud part. Since we know how to do that now, I bet you can. Yeah. We want this little sucker tight. People are torquing these things to 350 plus foot pounds. This is all chromoly. <clears throat> got aftermarket crankshaft, aftermarket. Glam nut. So they're exceeding the uh, the factory spec and getting them tight. flywheel lock off so we can spin it and then we will check it And that's too tight. But that's why we do this. If it's too tight, don't worry about it. Do it to its right.
that wasn't a concern, you just pull out some shims, stick them in, and you go about putting your engine back together. But it's a concern. It's all part of the fun. The fun of putting one of these engines together. Good times. Spare y'all prying this off. Got serious over here. Zero push in. Getting zero point one three millimeters, which is roughly five thousandths. That's within spec. I'm gonna keep playing with my shims. I'm trying to get down to zero three point zero zero three millimeters excuse me thousands point zero zero three thousands that's what I want three thousands five is within spec but it's on the high side it's not much difference we're splitting hairs here but that's what we're going for and once I finish that I'll come back and we'll We'll get a move on with this thing. All right, guys, a little recap for our tear this back down. We have set up our camshaft bearings. We have made sure our camshaft turned in place well. We have the crankshaft in there. It's turning good. Got my in place set how I want it. I was wrong. We're going to redo it from five thousandths to three thousandths if I could, but I got to thinking once I torque this thing down to. I don't remember the stock specs, but I'm going to 350 with it. That should, that should be good. I think it's going to be good. But now, in my 19 socket, that on there. I'm going to tear it back down, and uh, we're going to dress this crankshaft out here in a second. Okay, so we're going to pull our crankshaft back out. Take me a little peek. That one's got a sharp enough edge. I want to scribe me a line on that bearing so I can see exactly where it needs to line up at. That way, when I'm putting this back together, you don't see me sitting there twisting on them like I had to do before. Okay. Crankshaft up. Womp. 